China's been wooing the world with sweet talk and shady deals, but its aggressive bullying is pushing it towards isolation. Go, Xi Jinping, use intimidation. Uh-oh, she hurt himself using intimidation. Welcome to China Censored, I'm Chris Chappell. For years, China's been trying to mold the world order in its own image by charming and corrupting international organizations. I'm looking at you, UN. It's exerted its influence through Belt and Road Agreements, funding research, and even building schools in foreign countries. For China, soft power is the name of the game. It especially wants to let the international community know that it's open for business after ending zero COVID. That's why Chinese leader Xi Jinping put a lot of effort into striking a cordial tone at an important international meeting like last year's G20 summit. But the world is starting to catch on to China's game, and it's not working as well as it used to. The West, in particular, is becoming more wary of China. Italy, for example. In 2019, they were the first and only Western power to join the Belt and Road Initiative. But recently, an Italian minister said joining China's Belt and Road was an atrocious decision. And according to Bloomberg, Italian Prime Minister Giorgia Meloni reportedly told Li Qiang during the G20 summit last week that Italy plans to exit. So why didn't Maloney tell Xi Jinping directly? Well, it might be because for the first time since he took power in 2013, he didn't attend this year's G20 summit in India. Instead, China's premier Li Qiang led the Chinese delegation. That's right, you heard me. This year, Xi didn't even try to extend the CCP's soft power network. Why? Well, China never gave a reason, but there are several theories. One is that Xi wanted to reduce the prestige and legitimacy of India hosting a G20 since tensions between the two countries over border disputes are high. Another is that Xi was too preoccupied with domestic issues like China's real estate crisis, faltering food security, staggering unemployment rates, and natural disasters. Some also believe that Xi is trying to avoid answering uncomfortable questions and that he's using his absence as a tactic to influence Western leaders like US President Joe Biden, who wants to talk to Xi about things like climate change. Perhaps she thinks it's more worth his time to focus on platforms with a stronger Chinese voice, like the Shanghai Cooperation Organization and BRICS. It could be a combination of everything, but one thing is certain, China is becoming increasingly isolated, and by missing the G20, Xi allowed others to isolate it further. With Xi and Russian leader Vladimir Putin both absent from this year's G20, Biden stepped into the power void to woo allies, right out from under China's feet. For example, the BRICS economic group led by China includes Brazil, Russia, India, and South Africa in addition to China. China has been hyping up BRICS as a counter-West order and a path towards de-dollarization. But the recent BRICS summit ended with no new currency and all five members issuing differing and contradictory commentary on de-dollarization. And now Biden is swooping in. Biden met with BRICS leaders from India, Brazil, and South Africa, conveniently leaving out Russia and China. And he managed to secure additional deals with India. This includes an agreement for Indian shipbuilders to service forward-deployed U.S. naval ships, as well as the Partnership for Global Infrastructure Investment, a new economic corridor that connects India, the Middle East, and Europe through new railways and cable lines. On top of it all, Biden announced plans to deliver a better, bigger, and more effective World Bank. According to the Biden administration, this has the potential to unlock $200 billion in new lending capacity over the next decade for the developing world, possibly cutting China out of the picture. It seems like the CCP might just be starting to lose its grip, and it only has itself to blame. I'll tell you why in a moment. But before I continue, I gotta share with you an exciting opportunity. Do you like gaming? Do you like complex geopolitical analysis with pretentious philosophical ramblings sprinkled in with a dash of humor? then you might be the perfect candidate for our new channel, Gamers Unbeaten. We have a segment called Deep Thoughts While Gaming, and we are looking for writers. If you have experience writing, send a resume and cover letter to gamersunbeaten at gmail.com explaining why you think you'd be the perfect candidate for the job. Applications will be closed September 30th, so if you're watching this episode in the future and you've missed the date, please don't apply. I'll be right back. Welcome back. China is becoming increasingly isolated on the world stage, and it might just have something to do with how the CCP acts. Who would have thought that being a bully would turn people off? China's shocked, absolutely shocked. I guess China was just used to people turning a blind eye. But it's becoming increasingly hard to ignore China's outlandish bullying and hypocrisy, and it's making deal-making a lot harder. China has itself to thank for that. 
shortly before attending this year's G20 summit. Chinese Premier Li Qiang went on a charm offensive in the ASEAN summit in Indonesia, highlighting China's long history of friendship with Southeast Asia. He said, We have preserved peace and tranquility in East Asia in a world fraught with turbulence and change. But this was just days after China came out with a new 10-dash line map that aggressively claimed even more territory as its own, and angered several Southeast Asian countries. I don't see how that's preserving peace and tranquility. That insult to injury, even after singing about peace, China continues to intimidate its neighbors. These are Chinese Coast Guard ships surrounding a Filipino ship in disputed territorial waters. You can see why China's neighbors might be suspicious of its intentions. That's why many countries, like Vietnam, are seeking to balance China by making deals with the U.S. The U.S. and Vietnam, for example, recently inked a historic partnership. Meanwhile, other nations are conducting military drills, despite China's efforts to divide countries from U.S. influence. And the U.S. and Thailand Air Forces recently conducted their first ever enduring partners engagement. China often blames the U.S. for pitting countries against China with a Cold War mentality, but it's China that's been making it harder to do business in China. Look no further than all the foreign businesses shifting investment out of China. These are the very people who are most greedy for Chinese money. But even they can sense that China is not a friendly country to do business with. Especially after China's anti-espionage law made it very clear that foreign businesses are at risk of arbitrary crackdowns. As a sign of the times, Norway's $1 trillion sovereign wealth fund is closing its only China office. Even BlackRock. The asset management firm that said in 2021 that investors should triple their allocations in Chinese assets closed its China Flexible Equity Fund, though it probably has more to do with the fact that it's facing a congressional probe over its investments in Chinese companies. It seems like the reach of China's soft power is dwindling. China, of course, still has lots of ongoing business, trade, and diplomatic relations, but it remains to be seen how much further China can go, especially with the West. Good thing it appears China is finding itself more and more at ease with authoritarian countries like Russia and North Korea. While China is becoming more isolated, China and Censored is becoming even more connected to the world around us. But we need your help by supporting us on patreon.com slash China Uncensored. All it takes is as little as a dollar an episode to fight the CCP. You'll also get to ask me questions I'll answer on the show, and today's question comes from Spooky. To what extent does the CCP use slave labor slash forced concentration camps to manufacture goods within the country? Is it a small or large amount? Or instead of producing goods, do they use minorities and other targeted groups to install infrastructure? That's a great question. It's kind of like a game of chess. First of all, even Chinese people who legally work often work long hours in bad conditions for little pay with no right to unionize. So it's not great for anyone. But China has an untold number of black jails and labor camps pumping out product. It's not just ethnic slave labor like in Xinjiang. It's all throughout China. But they hide this from Western companies with a complex web of supply chains. For example, Nike will buy from one Chinese company, which gets its supplies from another Chinese company, on down the line until it becomes very hard to trace anything to its source. That's one reason companies like Nike lobbied so hard against the Xinjiang forced labor bill. They knew it was very likely there was some kind of forced labor somewhere in the supply chain, as long as they were tied to China. Like I said, China approached it like a game of chess. And if you want to know more about chess, check out the latest drop from my new channel, Gamers Unbeaten. Thank you for your question and your support, Spooky. And if you want to join the 50 Cent Army, click that orange button. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.